six participants. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our world webinar today. My name is Natapon Jilun Tam. Working as a cell manager, uh, Southeast Asia for Sisline and Ecolab company. Today, uh, our colleague Annie would like to share your presentation about how to swipe and in that swine fever, now we get your business to African swine fever and our keynote speaker is the first. Let me introduce uh, Elaine K, our technical from Global Animal Health Delight and Ecolab company. She is a background on committees and have a lot of experience in cleaning and disinfectant and the audit in farms and slaughterhouse as well. For the second one, let me introduce uh, Mr. Woodsmith, the Woodsmith graduated from Veterans School and have many experience in the better farm management and cleaning and disinfectants as well too. So for the first step, is that, let me introduce the past Elin K, please. Today, Elin K will support and talk about our word uh, now we get your business to African sewer fever by use cleaning and disinfectant and how to remove and reinvent your business again after infect African sewer fever. Hello everyone. Can you just let me know if you hear me clearly? It should be okay. So welcome to our webinar. My name is Elin Kleis. I'm part of technical support at Sidlines and Ecolab company. And I will talk about um, the protocols because in fact, um, to control and to prevent African swine fever on your farm, you really need three important parameters, the three P's, protocols, people, and product. So um, people need to know the correct protocols and the correct product to have a successful uh, result. So let's start. I will talk a bit about the epidemiology of African swine fever, the transmission routes of African swine fever, and how to prevent and control the disease. First of all, the epidemiology of African swine fever. I will not talk too much about it because all of you know the disease, um, but you need to know that it varies between different countries, different regions, and different continents worldwide. So we have different characteristics of the virus. It can be present in wild animals, and wild animals can be a reservoir as well. So then I can talk about wild boars, but also on birds, insects, or other kind of animals. It um, survives in, in environmental conditions, and um, it has a kind of a human social behavior. So it's really important that we prevent and control the disease to make sure that we don't introduce it to our farm and that we even don't spread it on our farm. So how is transmission happening? Here on this picture, you see um, the different vectors that can influence the spread or the transmission of African swine fever. 
So for all of you, it will be the left side of the picture that is the most important part. Uh, because you don't have wild boar in um, Thailand or in the region, it's not really related to that. But on other parts of the world, wild boar are a huge vector as well. So, for example, materials are really important. Materials, it's also related to human. So, human can be a transmitter of the disease, of the virus. Um, by indirect contact, of course, with their shoes or boots. So entrance hygiene is really important. We really need to take care of this. Also, transport is a huge vector because they come on every farm. They go from farm to farm. So they really need to be uh, cleaned and disinfected in the most optimal way that is possible. Um, so pigs directly, they can have direct contact with an infected pig, and that's the easiest way to transmit the disease from one animal to another animal. Then we can also have uh, some insects that can transmit the virus as well. So we need to be careful for this as well. And um, feed, there I mean um, household feed or, or spoiling feed. Uh, we really need to take care about that as well. We cannot give this to our domestic pigs because feed can carry the virus as well. And that's how we can transmit it to our domestic pigs as well. So that's just to show you the different um, um, vectors or transmission routes, possible transmission routes of the virus. I will just show you one video. I hope you can see the video. No. I will just share my screen. Again. One second, please. Now you should see the video. So that's just to show you how easy and how fast it happens to transmit the disease from uh, feed or from direct contact with animals to your domestic pigs on your farm. So that's really to, to make you aware of the different transmission routes. So that's here on wild boar. We can go a bit further because you don't have, but that's here important um, that feed can have an influence as well. That your boots can have an influence. If you have infected boots, then you can infect immediately your domestic pigs as well. So then you will see um, symptoms coming on the pigs. So the red uh, dots or purple dots that are the most visible um, signs. They can have fever, they can uh, cough or, or vomit. Um, so that are all possible symptoms of the disease. So you see the, the animals are really sick. And even they die uh, within 10 days if they are infected. So it goes really fast. Also, bringing other animals on your farm is really a high um, risk. Here, like you see, feed, household feed can be high risk as well. So I will stop here because now we go again on wild boars. That's for other parts of the region. But that, this video is just to show you how important it is to take care of all these vectors. I will just change screen again. You should, should see the transmission routes again. So to go further, we go to prevention and control because that's a really important part. 
and therefore you really need to educate people that they know how to handle and what to do in a correct way. So they need the adequate protocols and uh, the adequate products to be able to prevent and control the virus on their farm. So first of all, biosecurity is key. Biosecurity should be the basis of any disease control program on a farm. What does it mean? Biosecurity is really related to cleaning and disinfection in farm environments. So we should clean and we should remove as much as possible before we um, have new animals in our farm. Disinfection, you should use the appropriate disinfectant that has a proven efficacy against the virus to be sure that you removed all possible parts that left inside your barn. So on top of that, you still have preventive actions. So to, to make sure that you cannot spread the disease on your farm, and you will always have a little part of antibiotics, um, but we need to reduce as much as possible. So two important parts of biosecurity. We have the external biosecurity here on the left picture. That's really to avoid that the disease is coming on your farm. So for example, if your neighbor has the virus, you need to avoid transmission from your neighbor to your own farm. To, there you need to take actions. And then the other part is also really important, internal biosecurity. If you have, for example, one part on your farm that is infected, you really need to make sure that you avoid the spread of the disease on other parts of your own farm. Therefore, we really need to take into account the different vectors that can have an influence on the transmission route of the virus. So here on this picture, you see all the different vectors that we need to take into account to be able to avoid introduction and spread on our farm. So an important one is the purchase of new animals. So new animals coming on your farm. You really need to take care of that. You should put them in a quarantine pen to make sure that they are healthy before you put them um, together with your other animals. Feed and water is really important. Like I said, don't give, give household feed to your animals because it can be a reservoir of the virus. Water is also a really important parameter. What we'll talk about it later on as well. Uh, the virus can be transmitted via the drinking water of the pigs. So we really need to take care of this as well. Entrance hygiene, like we saw on the video. So boots or shoes of visitors on your farm or your veterinarian, or just as easy as this, your own boots or shoes. You need to clean and disinfect them in a proper way. You need to wash and disinfect your hands because you can transmit the virus as well. Vermin is also an important part. They can carry the virus as well. So they, they walk a lot. They can make a high distance on your farm so they can spread it on your farm as well. So take care of this as well. Carcass disposal is also really important uh, because we need to take care of this as well. Dead animals are dead for a reason. If they are infected, they can spread the disease as well. So we really need to make sure that this is done in a proper way. Material, all the materials used, we should clean and disinfect them to avoid having spread of the disease via equipment on our own farm. Transport, like I said before, they can transmit it as well. So wheel disinfection, cleaning and disinfection of transport. I know this is not easy, but we should do it as, as good as possible. So the purchase of pigs, um, we really want uh, to avoid having um, coming new animals on our farm because we never know the health status of the animals. So a quarantine pen is key. If you buy new animals, you should put them in quarantine before you put them in your own barn to have an evaluation of the health status of the animals. 
So also the introduction of new animal involves a kind of a risk. So we never know up front. So we can um, have the introduction of pathogens. We don't know which pathogens up front. So really reduce it as much as possible. Um, make sure if you have a new delivery that they deliver first on your farm because transport is a high risk. They go from farm to farm. If cleaning and disinfection is not properly done, it's a high risk to introduce the disease on your farm as well. So here on the photo, you see the difference between a quarantine pen. So you have a dirty zone and a clean zone. Make sure that new animals arrive in the dirty zone before they can go to the clean zone. Dirty zone is really to take care of a possible introduction of spread of the disease. The clean zone is really the zone where you change your boots, where you wash and disinfect hands, where you change clothes that are barn specific to avoid the risk of uh, transmission. Then feed and water. So um, like I said before, really important to take care of this as well. We really need to check the water quality uh, on a regular basis to know if we can introduce a disease or a pathogen, the virus, via our drinking water of our pigs. So take some samples, really important to take samples at the source and at the last nipple of the drinking water system to know if the problem is already in your source and if we need to treat the water source or to know if the problem is only in your drinking water system and if we need to clean and disinfect the whole drinking water system. So we have two options if we talk about drinking water. We have a treatment at sanitary stop. So that means when the animals are going to the slaughterhouse, so the barn is empty, then we do a full cleaning and disinfection protocol of our full drinking water system. Treatment during production, that means drinking water disinfection. So it's not cleaning and disinfection of the system, in general, but really the disinfection of the drinking water itself. So that's with the lower doses. Wout will talk about it later on. Here on the photos on the left side, you see some bad examples. Uh, for example, the first photo on top, it's an example of a drinking water nipple from a pig barn. It's an example from Belgium. Um, but here you see that there is a lot of dirt on top of the filter of the drinking water nipple. It can carry the virus. So we really need to clean and disinfect properly. How do you know if you really need to clean and disinfect? By taking samples, by checking the inside of the water lines. So like you can see here, if the cotton swap is not wide anymore, you should clean and disinfect for sure. If the water looks like a cup of coffee, you should clean as well. How do we do at sanitary stop? So when animals are gone, when the barn is empty, we really fill up our full drinking water system with a solution to clean out the biofilm that can be present and to really disinfect the whole system. So you open a drinking water line, start with the first line, for example. You dose with an automatic dosing pump or a medicator, a 2% solution, for example, of a C2000. So that's a parasitic acid hydrogen peroxide and acetic acid solution. And then you can, um, you will need to check at the end of the drinking water line if the product solution comes out of your drinking water system to be sure that the solution reach the end of the line. Then you trigger all the drinking water nipples to be sure that you also clean the sidelines, let's say, or the individual drinking water lines and drinking water nipples. You close everything. You respect the, um, the expected contact time to have a efficacy of the product. And then after that, you really rinse well to remove a uh, product, dissolved dirt, uh, parts of biofilm, and then you know your full system is cleaned and disinfect. Entrance hygiene, really important as well, because we saw it on the video, shoes or boots can really transmit the disease inside your bar. 
So I know these photos here on the slide are coming from Europe, um, but I think it's nice to share our examples uh, with you. Um, so that's how we how we do it over here. We make sure that we have a minimal number of people coming on our farm. We make sure that we have a fence or a door or something on the entrance of the farm to make sure that not everyone can enter our farm. Um, we need to check in visitors, so we register it. If there is an outbreak of disease that we can do a tracking to see where it can come from. It's not so easy, but if you don't have any register, you, you never know. So we also recommend farm specific clothes, shoes or boots. They need to um, wash and disinfect their hands when they enter your farm. So you really need a hygiene lock at the entrance of the barn itself to make sure that clothing, shoes or boots and hands are cleaned, disinfected and really barn specific to avoid spreading of the disease. Then uh, the boot protocol. Um, so it's always good to clean your boots first. Uh, so to remove the biggest part of the organic matter that is on your boots. Then you go through a boot bath to disinfect. Uh, there we have different options of products. Uh, Wout will talk about it. And then um, we also need to manage it correctly because a disinfection bath can become a contamination bot if it's not managed properly. What do I mean? You really need to check the concentration of the solution. Is my solution still um, having the disinfection activity or not? Um, if it looks really dirty, you should change because when it's really dirty, when you have a high load of organic matter, um, you influence the efficiency of the products as well. So check it regularly and manage it well. Vermin, so we really need to take care of this as well. Um, we need to make sure that vermin cannot enter the barn. That's, it's not so easy, I know. But uh, for example, here on the photo, make sure that the windows are closed um, with a, um, a gas, let's say, um, that, they, that they cannot enter the barn. The same for birds. Uh, we need to take these also into account and also pets. So a dog or a cat, we, we need to make sure that they cannot enter because they can be the carrier of the disease. Also make sure that the environment around the barn is clean and not uh, put full of stuff because then we create an optimal environment to have vermin or um, unwanted animals, let's say. Carcass disposal. So again, on the photos, it's an example uh, from Europe. Um, I know that it happens in other ways as well, but we really need to take care of this because dead animals are a source of infection. So we should take care of this. Um, if it happens in the environment, we should make sure that everything is burned well, that everything is cleaned and disinfected as much as possible that we don't transmit the disease from the storage of the carcasses to our own farms. So we need to remove the um, dead animals as early as possible. We need to remove them along the dirty road of the farm. So don't uh, go with dead animals between different barns, uh, for example, to avoid the spread of the disease. Wear some gloves to, to um, protect yourself as well, to make sure that you don't be the transmitter. Um, and yeah, for the storage, um, really take care of this. Uh, keep in mind that the dead animals are a source of infection and that it's really easy to infect other places, other spots, or to spread the virus if uh, carcass storage is not properly done. Material, same principles. So we really need to clean and disinfect all the material that is used inside the farm or the barn. Uh, so take some preventive measures, um, take barn specific material that you don't need to cross uh, all different barns with one equipment, for example, um, and make sure that you have uh, equipment 
for dirty zones, equipment for clean zones, that you really split the equipment and that it's not be um, that it cannot be a transmitter of the virus. Then the depopulation of the pigs, that's also an important one. The most optimal protocol is all in all out. I know this is not always possible. So if you take out a part of the uh, animals, if you know, for example, uh, which animals are infected, uh, make sure that you remove them as early as possible and make sure that you do it um, in a proper way and that you keep in mind to really clean and disinfect well um, before having healthy animals in the same places. So uh, make sure that you, yeah, that you load from a separate loading area, uh, that the transport is cleaned and disinfected as well, because if the virus is on transport, they spread it everywhere. Then the most optimal cleaning and disinfection protocol um, in practice has seven steps. And in fact, if we need to take care of drinking water um, as well, we have eight steps. So the first step is a dry cleaning. So we really need to remove all the organic matter that is inside the barn before we start the main cleaning with water and a detergent. Second step is the main cleaning. So here on the photo, you see a foam application. We always recommend foam because it has a longer contact time it can uh, have a better attachment on different surfaces, vertical surfaces, but also different materials. And um, it, it's visible, so you see what you do. You cannot forget a part of the barn because you really see where you cover it with foam and where not. After the contact time, you really need the high pressure rinse to remove the soap or the detergent to remove the dissolved dirt, to remove, in fact, the highest pathogenic load that is present in your barn. With an efficient cleaning, you remove 80 to 90% of all the microorganisms that are present. So cleaning is a critical step. The fourth step is let it dry. Why? Um, otherwise, we dilute our disinfectant more than necessary and we will not work with the correct concentration. So imagine if you need 0.5% uh, to disinfect everything, and there is still water present, it's possible that you work only with a 0.25%, and then it will not give you the expected results. So the drying step is really important. After we can go to the disinfection, again, foam application, because longer contact time, it's visible, to make sure that we cover every part of the barn to kill as much as possible and it has a better attachment. Then we have a drying step. Again, we don't need to rinse the disinfectant, just let it dry. And then monitoring step is also really important because we put a lot of effort and time inside um, the cleaning and disinfection process. So it's good to monitor on a regular basis for sure, if there is a challenge or a disease outbreak, you need to know if you removed everything or not. If you don't know, it's possible that you start up with new animals and that, that they are infected almost immediately. So the environment is really critical. Cleaning and disinfection is really key. So then I think I covered most of the protocols. I hope it was all clear. And then we can go to a small conclusion for my part. Um, I want you to know that we have a biocheck. That's a cooperation with the University of Ghent from Belgium. Um, you have it for different species, but here in this case, pigs is the important one. And you can really go for your own, own country um, to have a checklist um, with all questions related to biosecurity to avoid transmission and spread of emerging diseases or pathogens. So I would really um, propose this to you to, to try it once. Um, the link is here written on the page. Um, it's a really easy tool um, and you have a lot of information out of it to see where you have to put priorities, what step to do first, 
And then you can go step by step to really control African swine fever on your farm. I know it's a very complex disease. It's not easy. It's, re it's a real challenge to battle African swine fever. Um, so we really need to prevent and to control the disease. If we don't take actions on a biosecurity level, we will never be able to, to battle the virus. Um, it's a global threat, so everyone needs to work on it. Everyone needs to take preventive actions and uh, control actions to, to battle it. Um, so the early detection and biosecurity are really the basis to control African swine fever in a farm environment. Thanks for listening. Uh, please, if you have questions, put them in the chat. We can discuss them after uh, the part of Wout as well. So now I give the floor to Wout. Thanks to you. Thank you, uh, Eileen, for an excellent presentation for African swine fever and cleaning and disinfection. Please be sure that if you have any question, please send us to the chat box. We will use the last section for Q&A and answer you everything that you have a question. For the next section, I would like to introduce Rosemary to talk about our program like a zip line and ecolab solution for African sewer fever. Rosemary, please. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm trying to share my screen. You see it? Yeah, yeah. okay, great. Um, so I will try to uh, to help you a little bit navigating through the through the threat of African swine fever. Um, and I think uh, we citizens as a, as a company, we are pretty well placed um, we are pretty well placed to assist you in this because, okay, we have the, the global presence and you know African swine fever is spreading through the world since, since many years. Me, from a personal perspective, I was involved a lot in, uh, in the control of African swine fever in the Russian pandemic over the last 15 years because, yes, indeed, it started already. Uh, back in the years 2007, 2008, um, started spreading from, from Russia. Now, let's say after 15 years, it has arrived in Europe. And also now it's um, it's it's making a big threat in, uh, in Asian, Southeast Asian and China countries. Uh, so we are, we are, let's say, experienced, unfortunately, I would say, but uh, we are trying to help you to navigate through it, not only on a country's perspective, but also on a farm level, we uh, we try to help you. As you know, there is no cure for African swine fever. African swine fever is there when it hits your farm. It has a devastating, uh, devastating effect. And basically, the only right decision, the only right decision is to close the farm, to empty the farm, do the full cleaning and disinfection procedure, and uh, and restock. The farm with healthy, uh, healthy genetics, healthy sows. So um, it's better, it's better to keep it out and to do, to apply all necessary measure, measures, as Elin was describing, to keep it, to keep it out. Um, we have several programs, as um, as uh, Elin was explaining. What I will try to do is uh, giving, let's say, a little bit more detail to the protocols. Giving you the reasons why uh, why to use the products uh, that that we propose because we have done a lot of effort to develop them, we have done a lot of tests to prove that they are right, and also the protocols that uh, that we apply are um, are watertight if provided they are uh, applied in the in the right way. Why is it now so difficult to control African swine fever? Because Okay, it it would be very nice. I think any pandemic, any pandemic is a um, is a proof that viruses are difficult difficult to control. I think also in human health, we have uh, now the um, the example of COVID nineteen. So, but why for African swine fever? What is now particular about 
uh, African swine fever. And the, the single biggest uh, characteristic of the virus is that it's surviving very, 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 very long in, um, in, uh, in the environment. Here it's stated in protein-rich environment. I could I could just say um, in when the virus is hidden in organic matter, it's difficult to reach for your disinfectant, but it's still also it's like organic matter is feeding the virus. It's not like this because okay, viruses cannot be fed just like this, but it's uh it's just going in a survival mode and and it stays there. We will see according to different circumstances, how long. Uh, but this is one of the key elements why why particular African swine fever is uh, is having this big, uh, this big threat to the uh, pig industry on a global level. The second the second element, when a pig gets infected by the virus, it sheds huge amounts of virus. Eh? Um, and on the other side, you don't need a lot of virus load, viral load, to infect the pig. So this is like two things which make that it's extremely uh, contaminating. And the third part, uh, despite the fact of many efforts that have been uh, done to develop a vaccine, at this stage, uh, there is no vaccines that are giving uh, an acceptable performance. Uh, and I think, okay, there has been some, done some work uh, if I'm not mistaken, in, uh, in China, there is some uh, some experimental vaccines, but as for now, there is nothing nothing uh, that is working sufficiently. And about the survival time, uh, I will share a little bit how it how it's uh, comparing other viruses. Uh, you see, for instance, our Jeske disease virus is just a matter of days. So even if you do nothing. You have an empty pen after a few days. Uh, okay, the virus will be inactivated, and you can restock your your farm. You will have no issues. If you go, for instance, to uh, food and mouth disease, uh, you you're talking about the same, but you're talking about months of survival time, and it can be compared pretty well with African swine fever virus. Uh, the general survival time is also months, and we will see in the next slide. The differences uh, on the conditions where the virus can survive. Uh, room, room temperature and in feces, the virus can can survive more than three months, uh, so 100 days. And I think this is maybe already the most uh, important parameter to think of in your circumstances, because if you have degrees, uh, temperature of 25, 30. 35, 40 degrees, so room temperature, still you will have a survival time of, of, um, of or more than three, uh, three months. Um, what is uh, the next, the next uh, relevant uh, figure? It's the survival time in meat and meat products. It means, it means if you have ham, if you have, um, let's say, lunch boxes of, your, of, uh, of the people working in the farm, um, they are produced with contaminated meat. You give the feed, you give this spill to, the, to your pigs, or you just imagine your employees are just uh, giving giving the leftovers for, for their lunch, lunch to their pigs. Uh, then you have a risk. Then you have a risk that it's contaminating. And I think uh, one of the one of the stories. Uh, from uh, from Russia, I can I can share. It's a, it's a small story. Um, you know, everyone that is that is uh, having a pandemic or an or an outbreak of African swine fever on their farm, people are scared. People are scared, but they are also scared about the economics. Eh? And uh, very often, people try still to sell contaminated animals to uh, to the slaughterhouse, and they are coming into the consumption channel. And one of the stories goes uh, in Russia that the contaminated farm they have sold off their pigs uh, to a slaughterhouse. They knew it was not right. The slaughterhouses knew it was not right. And they sold off uh, their pigs or the, or the meat to the army. Right? Because the army, in general, it's a poor organization. So they were happy to buy cheap foods. Uh, 
and the food or the pit meat was sold was sent off to uh, to uh, an army base a camp base uh, which was like one more than 1000 kilometers away from um, from from the farm uh, where the uh, outbreak was and then there was a like, contamination in the neighborhood of that camp of uh, um, of uh, of the army so it's it's it was very transparent it's not a story it was really tracked and traced back that the source of contamination was contaminated meat so for sure it's uh, one of the parameters you need to uh, to watch out for uh, if you take care of your african swine fever very well uh, so you put it in a serum uh, you put it in uh, in cold circumstances survival time goes even up to six years so be careful try to make interpretation of the different circumstances that your uh, virus is going through and then you will you will understand that uh, even a small risk um, is 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 a really uh, significant one for your farm when it comes to uh, africa now uh, every farm has to make choices on the protocol but also on the on the solutions that uh, that you will be using for, uh, for cleaning and disinfection um, because cleaning and disinfection is and now I will I will talk maybe a little bit more in the particular case of you have or you think you have uh, had an outbreak now how we are going to handle this how we are going to make sure that what you cleaned what you disinfected is absolutely free of the virus I think one of the um, one of the elements that Elin was talking was uh, was water. I have to say that uh, very often um, people people are not really thinking about water as a source of African swine fever. Now um, we have we have had this, the the situations that carcasses are being are being just. Uh, taken off the farm but not really off they are taken off the farm premises but they are not really taken off the farm site so they are brought to a certain part maybe a little bit remotely maybe they are burned maybe they are just buried but there's a risk in this process that they're contaminating uh, the well water uh, so many of the farms there you are not using like uh, like city water because okay or it's not possible or it's just too expensive. So well water is being used, which is very fine uh, if the source is, is controlled. But at the stage when you have a risk, then in this case, you have absolutely to manage this risk. And I think uh, we were pretty, I would say, really slow in, uh, in, in, in understanding this risk. But at the, at the request of the industry, we did some, uh, some tests on our drinking water disinfectant C2000 and we uh, we are we are pretty happy uh, to announce that um, uh, that we have managed to uh, to test C2000 successfully at a concentration of 200 ppm and a contact time of 30 minutes uh, and we saw that it's effective so it means that if you want to manage your water uh, and if you want to be secure your water to be free of African swine fever with 200, only 200 milliliters per 1,000 liter, um, we, we, cover, we cover water as a potential source of contamination. Now, if you're talking about the, the, the protocol for cleaning and disinfection, works, farms, uh, premises, equipment, Sometimes we discovered that uh, the process is failing. So we are we are trying to understand, and we are not the only one because there is a lot of research. With the the, the reference uh, in the slide below. Uh, but what are the real reasons why a disinfection against African swine fever is inefficient? And uh, the first factor is uh, is already quite important: is the choice of your disinfectant. Because you have absolutely to be sure that your dis disinfectant is working against the disease you're targeting. In this particular case, we are talking about African swine fever, and there is a huge difference in efficacy. Um, we'll come back to it. But you need to be sure that 
your product is working and that it's approved in your country for using against African swine fever. Uh, the second one is you need to use it at the right dilution. Uh, you have disinfectants uh, claiming to work at low concentration. Others are known to work only at high concentration. Uh, so be sure, be sure in the process that after you did, did the cleaning, that you are doing a proper drying, whether it's forced drying or whether you just allow enough time to, for the surfaces to dry. This is a, this is these are both good strategies, but be sure that that uh, surface is dry, so you have no dilution effect of your disinfectant. Uh, third point is uh, your contact time. Respect your contact time, and I know it's very hard because if you, for instance, have to clean and disinfect your trucks uh, coming on the premises. People, people say, yeah, okay, uh, we disinfect and we cannot wait. Uh, the driver or the driver cannot wait for one hour until everything is, uh, until the protocol is done properly because, okay, then he needs to go for a second load after this or whatsoever. But if you do not respect your contact times, it means that, okay, you have an inefficient, uh, inefficient disinfection and it means that you have a really significant uh, risk. And the fourth, uh, the fourth, uh, the fourth element might not be the most important factor of inefficient disinfection for Southeast Asia, but when your temperature is too low for uh, for your disinfectant, it will not work. Few disinfectants um, are really underperforming at low temperature. Temperature, so make sure make sure that you choose uh, the right disinfectant uh, if you have cold circumstances. Uh, the environmental factors are, uh, just as we were pointing out for African swine fever, but it counts in general, but it's very particular for African swine fever is residual organic matter. Hence the importance of cleaning, but we will come back at the next slide. Um, lack of contact with disinfectants because of unsuitable surface. It's uh, more, it has more to do with the, uh, with the application or with the challenges that the specific surface is giving. Eh? I think it's very clear that uh, this, uh, disinfecting plastic surfaces, metal surfaces, is much less of a challenge than uh, um, disinfecting concrete uh, surfaces. But also we will have a clear uh, visibility on, on, on what it means for a disinfectant. And the improper application to surfaces or equipment means like, okay, if you don't disinfect your surface, because you forget an area, you forget a corner, you forget one of the pens because your stuff is underperforming. Uh, it poses a risk for restocking your farm after uh, after um, after cleaning and disinfection. Um, and indeed, eh, what is what is uh, another risk um, or why a farm got gets reinfected despite the fact they did a perfect cleaning job and a perfect disinfection uh, job. It, it can just be, let's say, a consultant, maybe a technician from uh, that just comes to your farm to service something, maybe some new installation. And it's just people who are bringing in the, the disease again. So I think it's related much to what, uh, what uh, Eileen labeled as uh, external biosecurity. So the cleaning and the cleaning particular is very important in uh, managing managing uh, African swine fever. And this also counts if you would if you would consider strategies of uh, partial the depopulation where you say, okay, we have clean zones, we have dirty zones. What do we need to do? How we need to handle? You need to split them, let's say with the with the red ribbon in between. And no, nothing can cross the ribbon from dirty to uh, to clean. And for the clean zone, you need to clean it like a maniac, I would say. Yeah? Uh, and how? What do you expect for, from a cleaner? How a cleaner can can help you? I think number one expectation for a cleaner is it needs to help you to remove the dirt. Yeah? This is key number one. Yeah? I I put a lot of stress on it. It should remove the dirt. Uh, next to that, there are some nice to have uh, characteristics of a, of, a, um, of a foam. In this case, it should improve the quality of your work. 
it should ex you, you should exploit the full capacity of your cleaner and right, the full characteristics and i will come back in the next slide what it exactly need and you, it should not you know, destroy your farm it should not be toxic to your uh, to your people it should not be harmful to the animals that come in uh, afterward and and at least uh, it should be affordable now i can i can I can say, okay, Kinosan can do this dirt, dirty job for you. Uh, it gives really superior cleaning. And I uh, very often uh, I get the question like, what does Kinom, Kinosan now mean? Why is it different uh, than, than other cleaners? Uh, we can say that it's really a dirt eater, uh, despite the fact that your dirt might be dried. Uh, you will see Kinosan will eat through it. And it's a dirt remover, and I think this is this is the the key parameter. It drains back, it drains away the dirt from your farm in the sewage, and um, it's really uh, it's really um, the superior foam cleaner that uh, that we have. And next uh, strong characteristic is the adhesive power, and by sticking long to the sticking long to the surface. We really can see that it's working long and it's exploiting its full uh, capacity. Uh, it's safe for people and it's econo in a economical in use because you, you you need to use concentrations three times less than the industry standard. So uh, when we have when we go to the options for this, we have a virus it, and virus it has really been in in many areas the product of choice. Uh, by many governments, by many institutions, uh, and the battle against African swine fever it has been tested a long time ago in the European Reference Lab at a concentration of 0 0.5. But also, we were uh, referring to the contact time for vehicle disinfection. We have tested it with a concentration slightly higher, 0.5 percent, but with only a five-minute uh, contact time. And this is this is crucial, whether in wheel dips, whether in food dips whether in vehicle disin in disinfection, it's crucial to have a very short contact time proved uh, if to be efficient for African uh, swine fever. Uh, and, and we know it's working in a very wide temperature uh, range. Not relevant for uh, Southeast Asia maybe, but for the rest of the world, we, uh, we, uh, we really uh, see it as an advantage. And it's listed by a major uh, organization. It's the only clut guat combination uh, by uh, listed by FAO, for, uh, for instance. Now oh, we were talking about the different challenges eh, and um, uh, different challenges that uh, that are faced by a disinfectant uh, on the farm. And we found out that um, in the preparation of uh, an outbreak of African swine fever in US. They did uh, they did the tests with different disinfectants, and we're trying to understand which one now are really working. As I said, on a smooth surface, it's not of not a big of a challenge to uh, to to have your product working. Even though from the six products they tested, uh, they concluded that three are not working. Uh, so you see the orange cutoff line. Every one every uh, product, the lower three that is having the um this the uh, the efficiency the efficacy lower than four it's not performing and only three of the things they are, they were testing uh, were performing so we could see uh, that our virus it is performing at concentrations which are uh, two times as lower as the next uh, competitive product on the, on the on the list but if you compare uh, on concrete forces, uh, circumstances, concrete uh, floors, concrete uh, material, you will see that virus it is the only one that is reaching the barrier and is going over uh, over the limit. So it means that despite the fact that other products are being used at significantly higher concentration, double concentration, and more, still they do not meet the expectations of US standards. I have to and I have to admit that the US, the US standards they are not the easy ones. They are uh, with a high organic load, with high um, high water hardness. But this is really reflecting what is going on on your farm. So if you want to make a su secure choice, I think Virusit is really the product uh, of choice. Um, 
And I think if you use it, if you use it, it's not only uh, benefiting you managing the risk of African swine fever, but in case you consider a uh, restocking, uh, you also will cover all the other pathogens which are relevant for the industry, whether you're talking about Orjeski disease, whether you're talking about mycoplasma, PRS, uh, virus that covers them at the concentrations e uh, equivalent for the ones that are being used for uh, African swine fever. So, uh, my conclusion is use the trusted protocols, use the protocols for which you are 100% sure that they are working, but also make sure that you're using the right products, that you're right, using the right solutions, the solutions that have been proven to be effective for real, in real circumstances and in other, uh, let's say, in other. So, thank you for your, uh, for your attention. I think now the QSA is, uh, is open. I don't know. Uh, I will leave yes. it up to the moderator to uh, see what. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. We got a lot of our questions. Uh, first, first question is a key for keen out or swift uh, the disease is already in the farm. Yeah, they would like to ask about the key for clean out. If uh, the disease is already outbreak in the farm, could you please uh, tell me that what is the key to clean out? Okay, the key, the key for doing a, a sufficient clean out. Um, I think I think the, the question was a little bit different. Uh, what is key in the process uh, to make sure that when your farm is positive, it becomes negative again? And I think uh, I highlighted it in in my presentation. The key is uh, to do a proper cleaning. Very often we saw that uh, people are starting to do a cleaning and then they did a disinfectant, disinfection. And um, they say, okay, to be sure, uh, we will increase concentration. To be sure, we will do a disinfection again. But this is, uh, this is the, the, the wrong thinking. I think um, I was involved, I was involved in, um, in some, some um, some trials to clean out farms for brachyspira for so for swine dysentery, and I think swine dysentery has uh, has a little bit the same challenge for clean out. It's uh, surviving extremely long in organic matter, and uh, we we started to apply a double cleaning protocol hmm, where we did really twice the cleaning. And then afterwards, we did the disinfecting, the disinfection. Uh, so first, two detergent cleaning, because you cannot do a proper, a proper uh, cleaning without the detergent. You're just removing, let's say, a little bit, a little bit the dirt, but uh, the the invisible dirt where your viruses are hiding, you don't remove it. You don't remove it. It's like doing the dishes at home. You don't do it without the detergent. So that's uh, that's the key element: double cleaning with the detergent. And then the second thing, it's doing an efficient disinfection and you will need a proper foam disinfectant because it's the only guarantee. It's your quality control for disinfection. You will see the areas where you disinfected, the ones that you forget, you will, you will see. And, and, and I would even recommend in your circumstances to have the four eyes principle and to have someone, someone doing the foam and another person maybe looking from a different angle to see whether uh, all surfaces were well treated, so that's the that's the two elements which are really key, and then and then going further on it, uh, the question is when can you restock? When can you restock your uh, farm after uh, after this procedure? Um, even though from a scientific point of view, I would say okay if you did a proper clean out uh, and a proper disinfection, you can restock next way next week. But the general principle, the general industry principles that uh, that are being respected, uh, are talking about uh, more or less three months. Okay, thank you for your. Thank, thank you for your answer for the next question. How different tried? To, to pick up when the, or the water treatment because in the market have many types of the water treatment chemical 
is normally use a choline to choline dioxide and anything. How about a different choice for for pick up the chemical for treat African swine fever in your farm in the water treatment? Maybe Erin, Miss Erin, Q. Yeah. So, um, indeed, there are different active substances um, for water treatment. First of all, um, we have a proof, a proven efficacy with C2000, what is a parasitic acid, acetic acid, and hydrogen peroxide. That's the only one that is removing a complete biofilm. And we really need to be able to remove biofilm completely um, to reduce the risk of having pathogens inside the drinking water system. Um, chlorine dioxide, chlorine based products and hydrogen peroxide products, um, they can do a great job in disinfecting your system. They can also, uh, for sure, chlorine dioxide and hydrogen uh, peroxide, uh, they can remove um different parts of the biofilm but they cannot remove it completely so they cannot remove um the inorganic part of the biofilm so that's why we chose to have a proven efficacy with c2000 because that's the only one that uh, is able to remove a complete biofilm complex in a drinking water system you need that. The key is to uh, remove our biofilm and able to kill violet and bacteria in the same time, right? Yeah, indeed. So it's really cleaning of the system, so removing biofilm, and on top of it, disinfection of your whole drinking water system. Okay, I think that's it for the question for today, because it's now we have a time out, and uh, I will correct the question from the chat and maybe reply you by email individual. If you have any question, please feel free to contact us by the email. And if you have any question or everything in Southeast Asia, please feel free to contact me, Natapontelen Tan, Cell Manager, Southeast Asia, Global Animal Health, Seedlight, and Ecolab Company, alive with your contact in your screen. Today, we would like to say thank you very much for taking your time and uh, join over with me. I hope it's uh, very well and good for you. Please stay safe and stay healthy until we meet again. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>